Today we're being joined by a very special guest from the West Perth Waffle W side, Taylor Ferguson. Taylor, thanks for coming on. No worries. Thanks for having me. No worries. Tell us a bit about yourself. What got you into footy and what type of player you are? So um, I suppose growing up with a father and two brothers that love footy, um, it was only natural for me to play. I didn't actually get to play that much as a young girl, but come high school, we got to put in a team and play in the school comp um, over at Northern Senior. And yeah, after that, graduated, went to Swans and that's where my career started. That's good. So obviously, uh, being at West Perth, um, now generally, you know, top players in the state leagues generally try and get poached like they do in any competition. So is it true that um, some clubs, including East Perth, were trying to poach you? Yeah, so I um, finished up, I think it was back in 2018, 2019 at Swans, travelled around yeah. Australia for two years and then come back, played for uh, Ammo side in Divi 2 and just wanted a bit more of a challenge. And, yeah, got a call up from a couple of clubs, East Perth included. Um, but since living in Lancelin, it's just only fitting to go to West Perth. It's only an hour drive instead of an hour and a half. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, obviously... What type of play would you best describe yourself? So the style of play they play, like if you use like a play, AFL or AFLW play comparison, what style of play would you say you play like? Um, I definitely am an outside midfield. I do like to run up and down the wing. Um, back in the day, like an Ashley Sharp, I suppose I'd compare myself to. I was always playing under her and learning the, winging, the wing role from her and then going on to a half forward. But, um, yeah, definitely not inside mid, definitely outside. Now, you're speaking of midfielders. Now, there was a particular game that was probably really strong for you last year. In round 13 of last season, 27 disposals, four marks and eight tackles. And uh, I just happened to come upon a highlight package from that game. So let's go and check that out and see some of the best from yourself in that particular game. Leading by six points. Ferguson swooping in from the side. Long ball to the tip of the goal square. And it's across the hurriedly gets boot to ball. On the end of it is Glanville showing her desperation. But it's West Perth again through Ferguson. And the Falcons clear out of the congestion. Bounces awkwardly. Thumped away. It's on right centre wing. Ferguson, who's been great this afternoon. Pocket back towards half back. And with the flight of the ball, a great through the traffic is Roper. Gets a high ball, doesn't cover much ground, but a real key weapon in midfield. Ferguson gets the sit. Good Shepherd two from Bennett. And that allows Fergie hard. West Perth with numbers out the back. Well, here we go. Taylor, obviously some nice game there and love a bit of a handball in that game, Alex. Yeah, no, it's always um, been ingrained in me from uh, Nicole Graves back at Swans. Always look back door and always hand it off. Um, they've usually got a better vision of the game and it always works. <laughs> Sure. Um, what would you say now that we're on the tra track of highlights in that particular game? What would you say is one of the best individual games you ever played? And was it one of the was it that game or some other games that come to mind? Um, look, I do have a lot of pockets of the game where I find I play really well. Um, last year was just I'm sort of coming into my prime, and being an older player, it's sort of a weird way to. Um, to say that, I suppose, but I've just learned so much and becoming a lot fitter and learning to look after my body. And to be mm. completely honest, um, practice match one uh, this season was a couple of weeks ago, and I think I played one of my best games there. Um, yep. Obviously, I got nominated in that East East Perth game um, as you know the player of the of the round. But yeah, I, there's not really any other big game that I can sort of um, pick on other than the practice match that. Probably wasn't recorded. That's fair enough. Um, so obviously an interesting story that you actually were a part of the West Coast and Fremantle Academies. What was that like? Oh, incredible. An absolute amazing opportunity um, to train and to, you know, be amongst such elite players um, and in an elite environment. Um, I'm forever grateful to be a part of um, the gym, the facilities, you know, the camaraderie with the girls, getting to have dinner afterwards with them all and mingle, it's its just a complete different world to what um, I've ever experienced. So, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. That's good. So 
generally when you, well, at least from my and I hear it, if you're in the academy of one of those stay, uh, clubs, Free Arrow West Coast, you generally stay in that. So how did the opportunity to switch? Because I don't generally hear about that too often, if at all. No, well, I suppose my story is a little bit um, unique, I guess. I, I'm not a massive player in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm not strong. Well, yeah, I am strong, but I don't look it. Um, I'm quick, but I'm not the quickest. I'm sort of that fringe player of the AFL, I suppose. And yeah. um, teams are just looking for a certain type of athlete. Um, and there's a lot of commitment involved in that. So I suppose it was a two-way street in terms of, look, you're not quite there yet, but I'm not fully committed to make it to the AFL either because my life is quite hectic anyway with work-life balance. And I don't think... Um, it would have matched my lifestyle, to be completely honest. That's fair enough. But as you mentioned before about having the dinners and that with them, how how was that time in terms of making some bond and friendship with some of the players that may still be there today? Oh, it's awesome. It was absolutely incredible. Um, a few girls I actually grew up with, like Emro Driscoll and um, Emily Bonza. Uh, she was in the, in the sides as well. A lot of my teammates from Swan Districts, like I played with Ebony Antonio, um, and Cara Donellan or Antonio as well and and Steph Kane she's moved over to Essendon yeah. and yeah just a lot of the girls that I've been a part of them have been able to play with um it's so good to watch them and just to have a little you know dip my toe into what their world is was awesome but um super happy for them all yeah, of the names you mentioned the one that strikes out the most is Emma Rodriguez because she's a very um lively character isn't she yeah, she is. Yeah, she's um definitely right up the top, way above my level. But um, no, she's she's an absolute laugh, and so good to see her big smile on on the screens. Sure. Now, the best and fairest at West Perth last season must have been pretty cool and a huge honour to accomplish. Oh, it's it's the biggest honour I think I've ever got from my footy career. Um, it was a massive surprise. I came out the gates in round one, two, three, and four, not getting many points at all. And then, um, yeah, I just obviously brought it home. But a good end to my season, um, you know, it's not winding down, but it's, it's, I suppose, just getting started after that award. Sure. How were you in that? Now, were you one of the people, because when I, it's, now I don't like talking about myself too much, but when I won the first in cricket two, you know, yeah, last season, you know, you always got the phone up or you always in your memory going, all right, this game, I did this, this guy did this, will they, or this girl did this in your case. So, you know, are they going to get votes here? Or who's who's my opponents that I'm going to struggle with here in the votes? Were you like that in that night when you were coming home strong? You're like, right, make sure he doesn't get votes here or she doesn't get votes there. How were you in that moment? Nah, like it was, it all happened quite quickly. I, I knew I had a good end to the season. Um, mm. But in saying that, it's anyone's game. Everyone played really well towards the end of the season as well. Like you've got Emily Bennett, that was um, a real strong contender. Jeevna. Um, yep. So yeah, it was it was anyone's anyone's really. But um, no, it was really good to see me come home and and win the medal. Sure. How many votes did you win by? Do you recall how much you won by? I don't know. I think it might have been ten votes. Um, yeah, I have to double check that. But it was uh, yeah, it was it was close close count really. So do you know how they generally do their visits? Like a, a, every individual play, it's like an out of 10 ranking. How, how does yours work? I'm not 100% sure on that one, actually. I have to ask um, Luke Richo. But I think there's a certain amount of um, people that get votes and I think it's a 3-2-1 and they just get counted up. I think it can get a total of like 12, so it might be four different um, vote cards get handed out each week. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, you know, the reason I ask is basically to say – you one game in so that's how i was just trying to get how tight it was in the in the end so that oh for sure yeah i'm pretty sure that's how tight it was yeah so what would you say some of your strengths as a football you mentioned about playing saying and an outside mid as well um what would you say some of your key strengths as a footballer um i like to think i've got a lot of knowledge of the game and and how well the working the width of the ground um so being an outside mid you just have so much space to run onto and and you know you, you don't like congestion, so just trying to switch the kick out to the um, the wings and stuff um, is probably a strength of mine. And and trying to teach the girls nowadays because we've got so many young girls in the West Perth um, club that are still learning and are still trying to get their head around. Um, you don't have to have 
all the time to win. So just trying to coach them in, on the field in terms of um, keeping your space, keeping your length and just trying to um, create as much space for the forwards to run into really. So, so what would you say some of your um, goals heading into this year? Obviously coming off at best and fairest time, obviously, what are some goals you got for this year? So I just love to keep playing well. Um, I'd love the team to win a few more games than last year. I'd love them to make finals. I'd love for us to win a flag, really. But um, personal goals of mine, I've, I've written a few down, but they're more so uh, fitness-based and educational-based. Like I'd love to impart as much knowledge as I can to the girls and, and try and become a better leader. Um, I've been voted yeah. into the leadership group, so I, again, so... I'd just like to in, improve my leadership skills um, and just learn as much as I can whilst I'm in this um, amazing, amazing environment. Sure. Now, I was going to get into this. So, obviously, you've been in the leadership groups, obviously. Um, ha is that always something you're always striving to be in or was it something that just kind of you got voted into or asked to get into or was it something you, from when you started playing footy, it was something that you had an interest in being a part of? So back in at Swans, um, I was there for a few years and then I got voted into the leadership group, um, which is a big surprise, really. I just did what I thought was the best thing and, and the girls responded with that. And then coming back into West Perth or back to West Perth, back in a waffle side, I just led with what I thought I needed to do. Um, there was a lot of young girls not struggling, but, you know, they got beaten and didn't win a game the previous year that I came in. So trying to get their morale up and mm -hmm. I think that just translated into a leader and, and yeah, got voted in and, and got to captain a few of the games at the back end of the season. And I think I thrived in it, to be completely honest. Um, I loved it. I love leading the girls. I love teaching. So I think that just comes natural to me. So, so obviously, as you said, you've been in for a while, obviously at the Swans as well. Um, Hell, so, so obviously back at the start of the Swans, you won the rising star and the most consistent player at that stage in the early part on your Waffle W career. It must have been a pretty cool honour to show that you can you do belong on this level and potentially higher if you're getting those type of awards in an early phase of your career. Yeah, look, um, probably my, my favourite one is the most consistent. Um, you don't have to be the best every week, but as long as you're playing your role, whether it's just holding width, getting a couple of marks and a few kicks and a few tackles, not necessarily kicking goals or saving goals. Um, yeah, I was super proud of that one and forever grateful for it. Um, Rising Star just gave me a bit of a bit of fire in my belly that, you know, I, I am good at footy. I, I tried netball. I've tried everything else and I've always come off second. So knowing that I was good at footy and, and loving the, the team environment was um, absolutely amazing. That's good. Who did you grow up barracking for? I'm always the West Coast girl. West Coast. So, uh, just some plays of the Eagles that you enjoy watching that currently play now, and I'd uh, be happy to have Daisy Pierce as coach. Oh, to be in that waffle at uh, the AFLW side of the Eagles would be absolutely incredible. Being able to be coached by Daisy Pierce and stuff, that's uh, just, mm. yeah, amazing. But growing up, you know, you got um, Selwoods. They were always going in hard. Um, there's just too many to really describe. I just, I just loved watching the guys run down the wing, have a few, few bounces, kicking to the forwards, and just being that link-up player. Yeah, was definitely what I tried to focus on. Now, what is the furthest length of a season that you've gone to because obviously you were telling me off screen that you haven't won a premiership before but have you reached your grand final before or what's the furthest stage you've reached so in my first year at swans we got to the grand final um i did get to play but unfortunately we didn't win and then i think it was 2017 swans went three for three so the rogers the reserves and the league all won um but i had, did have a typical uh europe trip planned so uh -huh. I went over to Europe and watched it online and I only missed, I think, two two games towards the end, which is a bit of a, yeah, my bad. But um, Gravesy, you know, she was very, very thankful for the season that I'd played and I got to share that when I got back and, yeah, I was really proud of the girls. But other than that, I haven't actually got to a, uh, a winning premiership, no. Right. So, obviously, you mentioned some goals for yourself and you said some goals more off-field ones, but... um. 
how do you how are you feeling heading into this year as a whole? Have you got everything sorted and you obviously played some practice matches already? So how are you feeling overall? Oh, I'm feeling absolutely great. Yeah, I'm I'm super pumped for this season. I think we're gonna as a team do really, really well, stay competitive. Um, just gotta keep doing the processes, focusing on us as a group and our individual roles. Um Personally, I feel the fittest I've ever felt. Um, I'm kicking better. I'm running better. You know, I've got the tackle down pat. So, yeah, no, nah, I'm feeling really, really good and excited. That's good. So tackling is it's a question I like bringing to some people that are good at tackling. When you tackle, do you make it hurt the opposition? Are you one of those strong tackles that makes it hurt? I don't want to make it hurt, but um, I do like to get them to ground, uh, pitting yeah. the arms and just making sure they travel down safely. Um, yeah. Always try and help them up after, but, yeah, no, nah, you don't go out to kill each other. That's fair. Good sportsmanship. Now, outside of footy, what are some other sports you either currently do or have played in the past? Well, currently, I don't have any other time for anything else, so just footy at the moment. Um, I do like to get to the beach because I do live on the coast about an hour north of Lan um, in Lanceland. Back in the day, like mum, dad and the whole family used to travel to tennis, basketball in the summer, um, netball. I was, you know, trying to get into the state league there, just a little bit too short. Um, but, yeah, just tried to get myself into as much team sports, as many team sports as I could. Um, but, yeah, and still actively involved in, like, the 2J Football Club um, on there, helping mum and dad out because they're massive um, supporters of that and the brother plays and train with them as much as I can. But, yeah, other than that, it's just uh, West Perth at the moment. That's very good. Now, it's one very interesting sport slash hobby you might not have mentioned there on purpose, but you can consider yourself a pro surfer. Oh, God, no, no. So... I do own a surfboard. It is a foamy, so it's a nice soft one. Um, but no, I I did teach myself to surf um, back in since living on the coast. I think it's only fitting um, and being, you know, we got some good waves up in Lanson at the back beach and stuff like that. So, and my mate he owned a uh, a surf lesson um, school. So yeah, got a few free lessons and off we went around Australia with my surfboard and got a cool not cool photos and surf some really yep. cool waves. But, but yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't consider myself a pro. Well, at least, going off the profile picture, at least you can stand <laughs> on the surfboard in the water. The only way I would be able to stand on a surfboard is if it's on the sand and I'm just standing <laughs> on it literally the only way. <laughs> yeah, no, it does take a lot of balance. It absolutely would. Um, who are some your favourite teammates you got down at the club? Favourite teammates? Yep, at the club now. Oh, gosh. Um, this is going to out some people. No, I think I'm going to go on age. Um, but that or being in Lanson, it's quite hard to um, socialise as much as I can. So I typically socialise at training. Um, yep. Obviously, the older girls. I travelled down with a girl called Louise McBride. She played her first waffle season last year and now she's coaching with us. Um, so, yeah, she'd be be my best mate at the club at the moment but all the girls are so supportive we've really clicked as a team this year um in the pre-season you know it goes for so long and we spend so much time together that we get to know everyone really well and and how they click and what they get up to and just catching up with everyone we've got a big group chat that is constantly pinging with messages so nah it's a really good vibe down the club it's good any coaches pets coaches pets Nah, I early last year probably would have had a few, but this year's pretty even. We've got a really, really good coaching group that, you know, there's nine coaches, I think. So I think everyone has about ten each. So that's the that's the club. <laughs> that's that's fair. Uh any nicknames you get that you like or dislike? Um, I get a heap of names. Um the obvious one is Fergie, Fergs, Fergalicious. Um no, nah, I love all of them. I don't care what I get. Um if it could be completely irrelevant. Tay, Tay Tay is a relevant one with Taylor Swift, Swifty. Um, yes. Yeah, I will respond to anything. Sure, that's, that's actually mentioned since your name's Taylor. I thought Tay Tay or something like that might have been uh, <laughs> yeah. one as well. Um, but I guess, I suppose, if you don't like it, I guess you just got to shake it off, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah, you can't bite each other's head off. They're just trying to um, make you laugh or, you know, trying to get your attention. So you just try and get them one back in, a, in another um, situation. Very true. Uh, Favourite TV shows or movies you got? Favourite TV show, um, I only watched it fully a couple of years ago, Friends, um, yep. but Suits would have to be my favourite. Nice. Um, that, that's, that's, it's been a common answer, Friends, has recently too. Now, yeah. what is the best goal you feel you've ever kicked at any level at any time? It could even be a training, it could be local, mucking around with someone having a kick. What do you feel is the best goal you've ever kicked? Well, I'm, I'm terrible at a snap kick, so it's definitely not going to be one of them because I've never kicked one. It'd probably be um, running down the fat side into the forward 50. Um, your teammate looks at you and just sees you screaming your head off that you want the ball and you eventually kick it straight and get it in there. It does take a few few practices, though. I have missed quite a few in um, in my time. I remember I recall the time I played at Mineral Re or now Mineral Resources against Perth when it was the WAWFL. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I wasn't aware that it was being recorded. Um, running into an open goal and absolutely missed and, yeah, yeah. went off about it myself. But, but, yeah, I think open goal running into space would have to be a good one. So to wrap it in, you didn't know it was recorded. Then in the moment you're like, great, that's embarrassing. And then then to top it off once you, or once you found it, oh, great, it's on camera too. Oh, boy, that's great. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's amazing how much that uh, that oval echoes. No, that's her. <laughs> They're just, just rubbing, it in, rubbing it in at this point. Um, yeah. Mark or goal of the year, which one would you rather do and why? I'd rather mark. I think it takes a lot more craft. That's fair enough. Um, so goal celebration, obviously you said you don't get many goals, especially from the tight angle. If you were a goal celebrator, what celebration would you pull out? Definitely be a double uh, double fist. Very, very strong. Um, yeah, it just gets gets the excitement out of you really quick. For sure, that's a good one. Now, it can be as unrealistic as you want here. Hypothetically, if you could best describe the best goal you'd want to get, what would it be? It would be a check side, because you mentioned about snaps, the torp, after the siren, in the wet. How would you best describe it? It can be unrealistic. As you um, want. Unrealistic. Well... I think it's pretty, pretty cool that um, people can kick them from the boundary um, offside. So, yeah, I'd, it'd definitely a check, check um, from the boundary. Check, so that'd be a good one. Who loves the limelight, the attention, the camera at the West Perth Footy Club and they can't get enough and they know exactly what to do when there's a camera around? I think I'd have to throw um, Kayla and Jess under the bus here. They... They love the camera. I think it's just that uh, the young girls, they love it. Um, they're constantly on TikTok and doing the dances and stuff. But um, I haven't seen them do them recently, but they do love the camera. It's good. Um, what is your thoughts on these TikTok things? These days? I could never get onto it. Um, I'm, I'm a fan. What do you think of that stuff? Oh, I don't even have a TikTok account. Um, it's great to see people with confidence. Um, but, yeah, you won't see me on there. No, likewise, yeah. Um, what's something someone does at the club that you cannot stand, whether that's leaving rubbish around, just being flat out annoying, trying to scare people, anything that jumps to mind? Um, no, nah, nothing that jumps to mind, actually. Um, yeah, no, nah, can't help that's you there. So jump scaring, have you ever fall, fallen victim to anything like that or have you seen people do that? No, I haven't fallen victim, but um, Courtney Ugal, I follow her on Instagram and yeah, she gets her her mates um pretty good, and it's quite funny to watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, watch, but you wouldn't want to be the yeah, one getting no. scared. <laughs> Not that, at all. Sure. I've seen a lot of the Sydney AFW girls do it constantly last year, and I can't remember the exact. I think it was Cynthia Hamilton. She legitimately got shit scared where she I don't know what she had in her hand, food or a phone or something. She literally threw it up because she got scared too. There's there yeah, there no. victims there. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't want to be a part of that for sure. Um, now, who do you feel is the best player in the AFLW competition? Obviously, there's so many players to pick from. It's probably really even Mon Conti, Jazz Garner, Ash Riddell, uh, Ebony Marinoff, Laura Garner, Ali Morford. Who would you have in that conversation? 
Um, I probably have Marinoff. Um, she's a hard hitter. She constantly goes. Um, I don't think she has a gear smaller. Um, she's just constantly on, constantly running. Um, she's a hard hitter, and she's actually a really, really smart forty player. Really good to watch. Definitely agree there. Um, toughest opponent you feel you've ever had to match up on? If it's not an individual, do you recall the type of, or the team it was and how that game made it? The toughest opponent for you or that player? Toughest opponent. Um, you know, ca- going into the academy and playing against the girls that are already at the AFL level um, has always been tough. You know, you come up against Turbo and a few of those girls, you, you think to yourself, you're not meant to be out on the wing. <laughs> um, and, yeah, just trying to tackle them and bring them to ground has been really, really hard. And even chasing, it's, you know, it's ten times harder to chase someone down. But when you do, it's really good. But, yeah. Um, even some of the Waffle W girls, like, you know, got Jamie Harkin and, and a few of those girls in the inside mid, and when you get thrown in to, to go help out the inside mid, you go, holy, where mm. do I go? What do I do? I don't want to break my arm. So, yeah, no, nah, there's been a heap of girls, and um, it's only going to make me better. Very true. Um, who's some teammates you've been impressed by? They kind of fly under the radar a little bit. They don't really get talked about as much as you feel that they should. Yeah, look, there's a there's quite a few because, um, you know, there's a few rising stars and a heap of girls that are wanting to get into the AFLW. Um, so we've got like Erin O'Brien. She's absolutely great for a mark. Um, she's been pushed to the, the forward line this year and she's going to really, really flourish, I think. Um, you've got Matilda Bain. She's a real strong down back. She's now in our... Um, leadership group as well so can't wait for her to get out there and show the comp what they've got as well very good some nice names to keep an eye on for sure what are some fun facts about you that people may not know about you um i'm one of six um i've got three uh three brothers and two sisters um yeah i'm, I'm an auntie to six i don't really know like i've got a massive family um i work for my parents i don't know if Many people in the in the waffle community know that, um, but yeah, other than that, not not a hell of a lot. I'm pretty open book. That's fair enough. Have you ever had any AFL AFLW player interactions as a fan? And if so, were there any memorable moments, or were they me- mem- uh, moments you want to forget? Um, probably not as a fan. Um, I've, I've not got to many um, AFL games, but um. I think watching them on the TV is really, really great because, you know, you when you're watching a play, you look back and and you mm. think, oh, yeah, I used to play against here and, you know, how how the team was and, and the experiences were. And it's probably just more of a great um, memory to look back on when, when we get to watch them on, on the screens. That's very true. Now, defenders, I feel like they deserve a bit more love and attention than what they get currently get in the AFL, AFL w side of things because, you know, obviously the midfielders, the the Brownlow centre towards mids and rucks even, you know, get recognised in that category nowadays. And forwards are at the Coleman. Um, defenders, do they need their own official title, whatever you want to call it, but do they need some form of an award because the other positions do? Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, they're, they're definitely missing out and getting the um, – yeah, they're getting missed. They need to, they need their own, uh, own award for sure. Mm. And what I found very surprising, I mean, not many people have said no to this question, but – for the few that have said no, a couple of those people are actually defenders themselves. Yeah, right. That's interesting. And I think one that comes to mind is they've said, well, internally they get recognised and some have won Best and Fairest Awards as defenders. I'm, I think I agree with that, but, like, I'm more to an, you know, outside in the public eyes. You don't, from an official awards point of view, they don't really recognise them. What do you think of the name? This is stealing it from, like, Danny Frawley from Bounds, the Golden Fist. That would be actually... He may use oh, it as a sure. piece, but that, that'd yeah. be a cool name. Yeah, it would be, and I think it's only fitting. There's a bit of history there and stuff, so no, I, I agree. I'm all for it. Love that. Um, if you were stuck on a deserted island with teammates, who would you want to bring and not want to bring? Oh, gosh. Um, probably Gemma Bailey. I'd bring her. She's a new, newbie to the group, and she's always um, making everyone laugh. And I th- she's a teacher, so she'd, she'd know how to perform in stressful situations, I think. Um, who would I not want to bring? 
I don't know. I honestly don't know who I wouldn't want to bring. Maybe Louise McBride because she'll talk too much. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Um, I mean, in, honestly, some people like to avoid saying it. It's not. I don't know if it's just because they don't generally have anyone or they don't want to upset anyone. But honestly, if if they get really upset over it, well, then are they really your friend? If it's only a bit of a fun. That's it. That's it. And I think uh, I think she'll be laughing when she sees this anyway. Well, I might even clip that part too for the Instagram <laughs> bit. Now, best chatterbox of the club. Who would you say is the best chatterbox? Chatterbox. Um, Jess Roper, she loves a bit of a chat. Um, it's always um, positive and it's always relative to the to the um, trainings and stuff. But, yeah, she does love the chat. That's good. Now, some of your most prized possessions, what would they be? Prized possession. I don't really know. Probably my little my little dog, Ralph. Sorry, who was that, Ralph? Ralphie, um, our little puppy. He's two nice. years old. He'd probably be my most prized possession at the moment. Very good answer. Now, I have to ask this because everyone has basically said this as an answer or have at least agreed to this being a most important possession is a phone. Would you be someone that has to have it? Because honestly, I feel, just my opinion, if someone says that they can't live without their phone, I think they're probably lying. Maybe if it's not their top, but, like, you still need Oh, it. no. This day and age, I think you need a phone um, just to be um, communicating and to be a part of society. Um, I can leave it for, you know, a few days or if I leave it somewhere for, you know, a day or so. Like, I wouldn't wouldn't die. Um, but, yeah, no, it's definitely a part of everyone, I think. For sure. Who would you say is the loudest and quietest teammates? Uh, loudest would be Louise McBride or Irish. Um, yeah, she's always pumping everyone up and, and constantly chatting, which is um, really good to see. Um, the quietest would have to be Megan Norbury, Jeevna, yeah. and probably Lil. <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Um, now, favourite food? I love pasta. Um, I love spaghetti, and it's tradition before a game that – you know, have spaghetti. Um, so, yeah, it'd have to be Italian. I love that answer. Um, superstitions. Do you have any superstitions before game? You just talk about eating the night before the same food or the day of. Um, is there any other superstitions that you have on game day or training? No, not really. Um, I just – I have a routine, but it's very, you know, it's not set in concrete. I don't have to put my shoes on a certain way or anything. It's it's more of a timing thing. Um, yeah. I've been starting to have a black coffee before a game and, and that seems to be serving me well. Oh, well, that's good. So I might have to keep that up then. Best to cook, if you do cook. If not, is it something nice and basic? Uh, I've been trying to get into the more Asian dishes, like noodles and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, just throwing a heap of um, spices and stuff at the uh, at the pan is probably what I like cooking at the moment. Yeah, you mentioned spice and spices, so I love spicy food. Do you like spicy food? I do, but it, it can't be too spicy. You have to enjoy your food. Okay. So one big tip then, and, and I'm someone that can handle it, is if you've ever heard of the sauce spicy buffalo, um, I did a big mistake, and I can handle it very well, but that particular moment I'm about to bring up, I couldn't because so what I did, you know, you get McDonald's, you get the chips, you get the little packets like, uh, like these ones, you get these little packets. And yeah. I um, put, it, put it all in. I Silly me. I just hit the whole thing in it, in the chip packet, and said it like that. And I couldn't handle it. It got to a point where I actually couldn't finish it because it was too hot. Oh, no. Yeah, Dude, no, not, um, no, no, not that spicy. I can handle it, but I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, I normally handle any spice. If I couldn't handle that, yeah, I'm never doing that again. I'll just say that. Um, foods you don't like. Yeah, I I'm pretty good with everything. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty easy going when it comes to food. Um, I've got my brothers and sisters; they're pretty easy going. But yeah, growing up on the farm in a, in the country, you sort of got you got what you got, and you had to eat what you had because it was literally nothing else. You couldn't just pop down to the shops and get something. And if I, I'm going to throw a few random foods out. You can see if you like them: mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. Avocado. Yeah. Tomatoes. Yeah. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, yum. Uh, veg, uh, broccoli. 
Yeah. Oranges. Yep. Lemons. Yeah, love them. And this might be a dumb one to ask. Chocolate. Of course. Daily. Except, yeah, I can't break you, Taylor. You'd like them all. Even if you, you're saying that, you can't break you. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I tried. Yeah. I've tried. <laughs> takeaway place. Favourite takeaway would have to be, is it this, not sumo salad, Soul Origin? Okay. Have you got a go-to order? No, nah, just to mix up the salads. Actually, considering you just said you like everything, yeah, it probably would be a mixture of everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, quirks that people would say you have that you may not want to admit. Yeah, I'm stumped on that one. I don't really know. Well, yeah, ask the club teammates. Very true. Uh, a few more, so real pressure coming on. Celebrity crush. Oh, for me, it would be a female and it would be Margot Robbie. Okay, yeah. fair good choice. Um, how do you fancy yourself in front of the goals? We've talked about it before, not being great on the bounce. How do you fancy yourself in general? Um, set shot, I think I'm pretty good. Um, but it's just when it's a bit manic when I'm I'm running into an open goal and put a little bit too much pressure on myself. But it's going to be a focus of mine this year, try and get a few goals um, over the season and see how well I can mm. go. Sorry, yeah, that's good. Favourite music? Music would have to be Zach Bryan. Okay, and the, the final one, I appreciate you coming on. If you could put the dream scenario for you this year, Taylor, what would it be? Oh, winning the flag. For sure. Good answer. Thank Taylor, I really appreciate you coming on. All the best for the rest of the season. Hopefully that premiership happens in West Perth. All the best. And I really appreciate you coming on. No worries. Thank you, Cooper.